off by asking you about what happens next when it comes to Iran. We've had so many conversations in the last year or so about the sanctions, about the waivers, and certainly about what the impact this is going to really have on that country. What's your take? Well, we are in a position now, we think, with a much better supplied oil market to accelerate the path to zero. Uh, we had to grant just a handful of waivers uh, after the president got out of the deal, but that was because we didn't want to lift the price of oil. We had a fairly tight and fragile oil market in the time that the president got out of the deal. But even in a very tight and fragile oil market, we took off a million barrels of oil and did not increase the price. In fact, when the president left the deal in May, oil was at 74. When we reimposed our sanctions in November, oil was at 72. And that was after we took off a million barrels. Now that we're looking ahead to 2019, uh, we see uh, just generally people are projecting more supply than demand. And that creates a better climate for us to achieve our goal of getting to zero. One of the things uh, that we heard from various ministers during the Vienna conference last year was um, a bit of disarray over the fact that they were not fully informed about the waivers, who they would apply to, how long they would be for, and there was a lot of worry there going forward about U.S. policy. What message do you have for OPEC, OPEC Plus, when it comes to the U.S. agenda for 2019? We think broadly, we only had to grant uh, eight oil waivers. The prior administration granted 20 over three years. So we've narrowed it down to now we only have five countries that are importing Iranian crude. And each of those agreements that we've reached with those countries is confidential. So we're not in a position to telegraph or to relay what we're going to be doing because each of these is confidential. That said, we worked very closely with oil producing countries during that whole process for the reason I mentioned earlier, to ensure a well-supplied oil market, a stable oil market. We have, the biggest balance that we've had to strike is between our national security objectives and our economic growth objectives. We did not want to accomplish our national security goals at the expense of our energy goals, which is to assure a very stable oil price that you know, is very helpful to consumers. So we think we've been able to do that. We're gonna continue working very closely with our friends here in the Gulf, especially with UAE and Saudi. Can we take a step back and look at the future when it comes to the United States relationship, not just with their Gulf Arab allies, but with Iran going forward? How soon will we see a rapprochement, do you think, between the United States and Iran, given That's, the kind of rhetoric we're hearing from both sides? Well, the rhetoric on the Iranian side is pretty hot. Uh, this is a regime that has been in power for 39 years. It's a revolutionary regime. I would say it's the last revolutionary regime on earth. The Ayatollah has said that he requires hostility with the United States. And so to your very good question about a rapprochement, that's really up to the Iranians. Uh, they're the ones that uh, sacked our embassy and, and then held hostage our diplomats, violating all diplomatic protocols. And so we've made it very clear that we would like to uh, restore relations uh, with the Iranian people. And if we can get to a new and better deal, uh, if Iran is willing to change its behavior and start behaving like a normal country, then there's a very bright future of relations between the United States and Iran. But that's up to the Iranian regime.